Welcome back, 0K fans, to the final, potentially, round of the 0K February 2v2 tournament. And, small correction, Diamond Point is Swiss, not German. My bad. Why are they fighting at all, then? Whatever. The... Uh, sorry. I was trying to put away the old war jokes. So, last round, potentially, we are actually going to be watching Diamond Friend and Sparkles go up against Anarchid and Hokomoko, because this match, if... If Diamond Freund and Sparkles win, we are going to be seeing no tiebreakers. It's going to be it. It's going to be game tournament over. That'll be done. Probably. But if 400 men who win their match and Diamond Freund and Sparkles lose their match, which I think is... I mean, Diamond Freund and Sparkles have been just on a tear, which is why I kind of watch them first. Because if they win, they're going 5-0. They're undefeated. They're the only ones with no losses on the record. And then that's pretty much it. First place determined. If Anakin and Hokomoko win then it's much easier. If Anakin and Hokumoka lose, then they're 2-3. If 400 men and 12 win, then it's 5-0, 4-1, Sorry, 5-0, 4-1, And there's no real contest for who's first, second, third. But yeah, Dime Friends Sparkles are just... Like I said, this is this has been a very quick tournament, remarkably. I know I mentioned at the start I wasn't sure if I'd have to leave, but honestly, unless there's a tiebreaker, unless, like I said, both Dime Friend and Sparkles lose and 400 Manu 12 win, there is... Like, this is going to be it. It hasn't even been two hours yet. But this has been pretty cool. Anyway, we are going to be on Astral Valley for the final round. And I... Have I seen this map before? This map is not familiar. I don't think I've seen this map before. Nope. Looks kind of new to me. Looks kind of neat, though, but it does look pretty big. Also pretty sparse. How big is this map, anyway? I, it's just... Uh, looks like it's somewhere around 18 by 12. No, it's got to be like 24 by 12 or something like that. It's This looks huge. Like, this looks disgustingly massive, but at any rate, I don't know if I have time to look that up right now. I don't think I do. So, looks like it is going to be Dime Front and Cloakie with Sparkles and Light Vehicles. Ooh, no air. Interesting. For a map this size. Anarchid, on the other hand, going for... Well, who knows? Anarchid and Hokumoka have not decided what they're going to go for quite yet. Yeah, that is... Okay, so we're seeing probably a pretty quick rush down. Nah, actually, it looks like... Nah, it looks like 18 by 10. It's very... It's surprisingly wide. But I don't know if it's going to be all that tall, or all that long, or all that big overall. It just seems like it's very wide. Yeah, starting out the Conjurer for Dying Friend, they are going to be setting up here... They already said they're going to be taking wins, and I'm not surprised, because, yeah, wind generators, 0.7, 1, some good spots for wind generators over here. Same time, we have Hokumoka going for Anthbots, Anakid also going for Cloakie, and, I already said, Sparkles going for the light vehicles. Although Sparkles, again, going heavily for the economy right off the bat. So the GBC going heavy on the rating, Southwest, just getting a little bit, you know, just getting in there. Or Team Sparkles, I guess. Getting in there, getting a dart, trying to see what's going on. I mean, it won't be able to because the darts that's got a homing missile on its back does not have flares, cannot live. But still, Anthbots are known. In the fact that there's Cloakies as well is not known yet, but it'll be fine. I mean, again, Cloakie isn't that abnormal. The general, I don't know what my factories, I don't know what factor my opponent's going for strategy is generally, eh, my opponent might be Cloakie. Yeah, just go for that. Like, it's pretty typical. Wesley Boss in before round five takes an hour. Oh, I mean, if it does, then yeah, I'm going to have to leave halfway through round five. I mean, it might only cast this match. I don't know. We'll see. It depends how long this one takes. Although the other ones are running in parallel, so it shouldn't be a huge problem. Round one is the only weird one because we had people coming in at different times because people were late or had internet problems. But now that's not so much of an issue. But yeah, considering it is a large map... Considering there's not a huge amount of stuff on it. Could happen, or could be just instant death. And we have a scythe coming in right at the two-minute mark from the GBC. 
Oh, the glaze aren't paying attention. Oh, there it is. There it is. Dying for in paying attention. Getting that micro going. I mean, if they get rid of that scythe, there's not a whole lot contesting this, actually. There's a couple lotuses, sure. Or a lotus. Okay, I guess that is the trick. Does hold it off for now. Just thinking, though, because right now Southwest is doing pretty decent when it comes to building up. And again, Dying Frame very quickly got all these metal, got all these wind generators. So their power is doing fine. But at the same time, GVC... No, the power is doing okay, but their power isn't quite as stable. Southwest is going to have much more stable power. Just because the baseline is 0.7 to 1. On top of all the stuff they built in the ground. The solo collectors they built in the ground. So it's unlikely the Southwest team is going to be accessing. Well, the GBC is almost accessing as it is. Just getting the character up right now. And then the Southwest team... Although I shouldn't say unlikely to be accessing. The, the Dime Frame Sparkles, that has actually been a problem. But now they got they got factories assisting. They got Sorry, got Masons assisting the factory. So for the time being, it's fine. They got the caretakers up early too, so production should not be a problem. Economy might be a problem. Anarchy going in with commanders. Fighting against commanders might be a problem. Fences are already in place, so the commander's going to have a bit of a hard time pushing in. But still, Anarchids got their commander up. Got the commanders upgrading. Not really that vulnerable to a lot of stuff. I mean, the Rodin are trying their best, dealing a bit of damage, but it's not enough to truly threaten the commander. So not a whole lot has been built yet for the Southwest team. I'm trying just to figure out what the heck to do, it looks like. And having a difficult time actually working out what that is going to be. Still, though, Sparkles is able to maintain some center of control, get some metal extractors back up, get some reclaim going, which is nice. How much reclaim is there on the sides here? Oh, wow, 1250 off of these alone? Sheesh. Dying take those. That's There we go. That is your economy. That's where you're really going to explode. Taking all those tiny little things. I mean, it looks like Okamoko's already taken the ones on their side. No, not on their side. No, that's it. That's the only ones that... Those are the only ones that have been taken. Anarchy did not go for them. Dying Friend is. So that is huge. Southwest side already getting a massive economic advantage as a result. They already had the caretakers up as well. So this is fine. They're going to be able to make full use of this. So right now, Southwest team already taking the economic lead. Taking a bit of a production lead. Losing on attrition, mind you. But the Glaive should be able to take care of the boys without too many issues. Especially with dart support. I don't know. Just too many boys. Still fine, though. At least, sort of. Glaive's coming in, getting rid of Fencer. Sparkles' commander will be threatened as well, but it's actually not going to be attacked. They would have been killed, but no. Looks like these Scorchers up on the north side are providing enough of a distraction that this isn't quite as straightforward as it looks like. The Scorchers are able to get past the Lotus, get rid of the Lotus in the front lines, and then keep going. Hokumoko forced to rebuild that. Unfortunately for the GBC... Sorry, fortunately for the GBC, unfortunately for Southwest, it is not really being followed up very quickly. So this Scorcher basically won't be able to deal any damage. And, of course, the Lotus got rebuilt afterwards. So, again, not a whole lot going on there. But, oh, the Lotus. Oh, no, 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 no. Not good for Southwest. There is a Lotus up here, but it's not going to be enough. The picket won't be up in time. These Glaives will be able to wipe out all the economy that's been built up right now. And nothing can get back in time. At the same time, Scythe, go, Scythe going in here from Diamond, Just a bit of revenge. Making sure that, yeah, okay... You might kill my metal extractors over to the north and some of my wind generators, but not very many, actually. They're in a very safe spot. But I just kill them back. Yeah. That being said, the GBC is way ahead in terms of static economy. Center control is in the hands of the GBC, and that's not great for Diamond Company. I mean, the reclaim has worked out well. Sparkle's going in where Diamond commander was to help take that reclaim and get themselves back on even an economy. And again, the GBC has not gotten a whole lot of caretakers, so while there is a lot of metal, it's mostly going to waste. So the Southwest team still getting a production advantage. They're still able to hold on, even with slightly less metal, just because they are using more of it. So I like that. Again, I like seeing the metal actually used, not accessing that kind of thing, and the reclaim being taken. All the stuff Southwest is doing, things I like to see. The GBC, however, they do have center control. They do have a really strong position. But, ooh, Scythe coming in here. There is an imp that's going to make that scythe's life a bit more miserable, but no follow-up forces to actually take that scythe out, or... Not in time, anyway. Ten seconds? For these sides? I don't think so. And at the same time, huge force coming out of fencers to take out everything Anarchy had built up in the center, and it looks like that scythe is actually going to manage to get away. Just barely, but does manage to get away in time, and Anarchy does not intercept it either. So as it stands, more scythe is able to come in for basically free from dying throwing... As Sparks and Diamond Front take out Anarchid Center Control just with that extra reclaim, just that extra production, honestly. Just the fact that 
the GBC was not using the metal they had. Now finally getting the caretakers they need, but it's too little too late. Southwest team, they have an economic advantage. They have a metal usage advantage. They have a production advantage. They're gaining a military advantage very rapidly. And territory under their control. I mean, they got the reclaim to work with. They're taking the reclaim they have to work with. I mean, they have, what, 500 metal reclaim just off that field alone? And the commander about to go down to the fencers. Nothing really stopping them. That's a commander down. And with that, GBC losing another 4 metal per second immediately. But at the same time, they have a fair amount of static economy and reclaim and such. But they're losing that too. Side is going in the north side of the map. Getting direct revenge. Dying for and going, okay, you destroy my metal extractors. I will destroy yours. And I'll have the wind generators to boot on top of that to make my power infrastructure even stronger. Despite everything. That being said, GBC coming in for a bit of a counterattack. And this will be able to tear apart most of what's been built up. Not a whole lot of riots were set up to help deal with a potential counterattack of Glaives and Ducks. That being said, it's not going to be hard to build that up. Two, two rippers will be enough, and those will be built up in time. It'll take like 20 seconds to get this built up. The Glaives, one of them will definitely be up in time. There will be a Stardust as well, or there already is a Stardust to help deal with that. So overall, the GBC losing a bunch of their static economy. They lost all their center control. Some pushback is happening, but the Stardust is stopping that from even being close to a problem. And with the Rippers up, those Glaives cannot run in the base. So while center control is still contested quite hotly, these Ducks don't really have a huge amount to work with here. The Ravagers should be able to take care of them if they get to Sparkless Commander. Sparkless Commander will take them out. What does Sparkless even have? Now, Machine Gun. Yeah, they're, they're done. And of course, Scythe's coming in, doing a bunch of work for free. Like, these Scythe's three times cost on the Scythe's alone. On top of taking out the center just through heavy damage, just through the fact that more was produced by Southwest Team with the economy they had. Yeah, this is going very well for Diamond and Sparkles, but still contested. Like, the center is not taken by Diamond and Sparkles. They've been doing a lot of reclaim work and getting a lot of static economy and rebuilding some of the static economy they had in the corners. But otherwise, not much. However, this... Oh, this is going to be brutal. The side is going to come in, take out the caretakers, probably take out the storage as well, because why not? Although, at this point, GBC doesn't need storage, but... Yeah, take out both caretakers. Actually, no, yeah, take out the storage, because now the caretakers are gone. The storage going down is going to be a huge blow. Oh, unfortunately, one of the sides getting into a bad spot. Both sides! Why are they both there? Dying French! You can micro better than that! I know you can micro better than that. I've watched your streams. Okay, there we go. Getting in the back of the factory. But not really going for it. And I can't say I blame them. Just get rid of more static economy. I mean, a lot of the production has been reduced by simply getting rid of the caretaker, so that's enough. That's done so much work. Just loosening up the front lines. I mean, a lot of ducks coming in there. 700 metal worth of ducks. But they can't really do much against the fencers at this point. The two spread out to really come in, and if they try to... If they try to join up, well, then the Rippers will stop them. Although, there is... Whose Phantom was that? Ah, oh, that was Dying Front's Phantom, just to be on the safe side. On top of the Glaze for extra defense, and just adding more reclaim to the pile. So, with that, the front line still pretty much, well, as we were talking before, still pretty much, you know, 1916. This is still pretty much the Battle of the Sum at this point. But it... Looks like it's turning around. I mean, the Ducks are being forced to retreat. No Man's Land is rapidly shifting over to the GBC side. And if Pokemon's commander gets destroyed, which it might very well be, a lot of Ronin are coming in to try to deal with it. That could be a problem. But the main problem isn't so much the commander. The main problem is just that there's all these metal extractors that are definitely going to the Southwest team. No doubt about it. Not to mention the amount of knowledge the Southwest team now has about their opponents. I mean... Radar just about into the main base. There should be an owl coming in shortly. Oh, no, there's not. Oh, there is, yeah. A couple phoenixes, then an owl. And, yeah, Hokomogus Commander. One more rocket away from death. Or just, hey, hit the scythe. Get it with the scythe. Take out the commander. There you go. Hokomoko has no easy way of building up the front lines. And I don't think GBC in general... No, GBC has no storage whatsoever. They have no commanders. Nothing. Hokomoko and Anarchid deciding this is it. Throwing in the towel. And now they're down 2-3. And Dime Front and Sparkles undefeated guaranteed winners of this tournament. Now, at the same time, I don't know about the results of the other matches, but Dime Front and Sparkles, they are first place. They have beaten... Actually, no, I do know. This this guarantees the results. Dime Front and Sparkles are definitely going to be in top spot. 400 mana, even if they lose, they're still 3-2. So, this is... Yeah, Dime Front and Sparkles, congratulations, 400 mana. They are guaranteed second place, and Anakin and Hokomoko guaranteed third place, I think. No, actually, it might be a tie for third place. 
if 400 men who lose, it's a tie for third place. If 400 men who win, it's a, then third place is entirely theirs. I'm sorry, entirely Anakin and Hokumoka's. Round Robin's weird. Just put it that way. Round Robin's a weird thing. Yeah, we're going to be moving on to that. It's on Incandescence. A map which I feel like I've seen, but I don't know. It's not. But anyway, we are going to be seeing that in a second, because that match is important. If Manu and 400 win, then turn it over. If Manu and 400 lose, then there is the possibility of there being a a match between Jasper and... Well, is it Team Jasper? Yeah, Team Jasper and Team... Team Anarchid, or Anarchid Hokomoko, which I think is GBC. Yeah, GBC versus Team Jasper. Might happen. If Team Jasper wins this. But 400 Manu 12 are definitely the favorites to win this. But I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it would have worked. So, yeah, that wasn't actually a very long match, all things considered. We do have time for this last one. But, starting out, Incandescence, the other lava map. I mean, clearly, aquanim has got a thing for lava maps because they're throwing it in the tournament. But this is actually, this is a much newer one, much more 1v1 friendly, or 1v1, 2v2 friendly one than we saw with Violence. Wow, okay, why is this so slow? Ah, there we go. Okay, back up to the form. Anyway, yeah, so we have Amphen, Amphen Rover versus Cloaky and what looks like gunships coming in from south. So southeast is Manu 400. Manu 400, we were actually doing great economically right off the bat. Artists in the first five minutes basically expanding all around the rings. Harassing around the side to make sure it's just that much harder for Jasper and Flores to build anything. And at this point, I think that might already have decided the game. I mean, Jasper Front are taking the center, but those edges being taken so decisively by Manu 12 is pretty much going to call it. I mean, we're already gonna see a Grizzly coming in here that should be the one thing that's trying to keep this trying to keep this team, trying to keep Flash Forest and Jasper in the match. But we already have a bunch of Ronin that will help deal with that. And other than that, I'm really not sure what would be there a few glaives coming in on top of that to try to help with this but even then i don't really see it doing a whole lot of good jasper their commander on every threat glaives should be able to take care of all this stuff I me mean, yeah okay there's some stingers there's a stinger there's a lotus but there's way too many glaives for that to be a problem stinger goes down the geo plant will probably go down soon afterwards at the same time the locusts coming on the north side of the map just to tear apart everything else and yeah flores's commander are going to be destroyed by all these glaives or maybe destroyed by the glaives Hard to say. The Locusts will definitely guarantee that destruction, though. And with that, Northwest team has basically no economy left. Right from the start of the game, they had basically no economy, having gone to the center and not at the sides. And now Crow coming in just for good measure, because when you have a massive economic advantage for your opponent, why not build a Crow? And that is that. That is game. That is the tournament. Just making sure Manu and 400 do take it with a very convincing and very early economic lead. On a map I really would like to see more of, because this is a cool-looking map, even if it does seem like there's kind of a right way of going about it and a wrong way of going about it but maybe that's just 2v2 is a bit weird i think it was designed for 1v1 i would like to see it in 1v1 but that would work anyway that is that that is the tournament that is it there's no tiebreakers for the first time basically ever go back to the results screen we got 5-0 for diamond sparkles 4-1 for 400 mana 12 oh wait what Topkak North Chilean G, my bad. They won their match. There actually is a tiebreaker. Topkak North Chilean G versus Anakin Hogamoka could be fighting for third place, depending on how that works out. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen there. But it looks like, yeah, there's going to be a tiebreak for the bronze place. I think should be fine. See, so yeah, we're not going to get into a tiny little... Basically, what would have happened is we probably would have had a double elimination match with all the tiebreakers. That's generally how it's worked. But, yeah, it should be bronze tiebreaker. I might as well cast that. I will be fine, I think, for timing. I mean, it's one of those things where I might have to leave in the middle of the match, so my apologies if that happens. But I th think it'll be fine the way things have been going. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.